Kilo, Charlie and I, Victor Kilo Victor with the Friday afternoon QSO Vlog Network. If you've got a radio, you want to check out the audio, uh, give us a shout. We will be recording uh, from now until 5, and uh, then we'll uh, post the uh, uh, recording up on YouTube. Uh, and if you do a call letter search for Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor, that will take you to our QSO Vlog page. And on that page, uh, you'll be looking for a uh, QSO entitled My Group Air Check. 5 10 19 which is today's date so uh, you'll be looking for that uh, QSO entitled my group air check 5 10 19 and incidentally we do have about uh, 560 QSO vlogs uh, on the uh, our QSO vlog page and not on the one page but uh, on a number of pages uh, that you'll uh, find if you do the uh, call letter search of Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor. Uh, this is uh, KC9 VKV and we're looking for you if you want to uh, get a recording of your audio. Yeah. Can copy. Boy, there's another station on 88. Uh, KC9 VKV, K1Z, ZL if you can hear me. Roger, Roger, Charlie. Got you good on the uh, Milford uh, PA uh, SDR. I got you about uh, about 15 over. Roger, Roger. Roger, Roger. No, okay, it's the station on 88 in New York City, right on frequency. Uh, he's down on 88, uh, Jim. That's causing a lot of uh, co a poor copy up here at the moment, Fred. Roger, Roger. Well, I'm sure we're giving as good as we're getting, so uh, it'll, uh, you know, remain to be seen the outcome. Uh, we have been running this network on this frequency on Friday afternoons for the last uh, almost year or so. So uh, we, you know, <laughs> we shall see. Roger, Roger. Roger. Yeah, right now the, uh, the splatter on the side seems to have uh, gone off. Yeah, KC9, VKV, K1, GZL, right now it did uh, clear up. Uh, yeah, uh, boy, look, we've had a nasty day up here, rain, 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 and uh, it's still spitting rain. We never got over uh, 42, 43 degrees today. That was the high temperature in the low 40s rain. Uh, boy, really uh, something else, uh, Jim. Uh, but in the clear, you're very clear, uh, clear direct. You are very clear uh, direct there uh, from uh, southern Indiana near Louisville. KC9, BKV, uh, which SCR are you copying it better on? K1G, ZNL. Roger, Roger, Charlie. Right now I'm on the uh, Milford PA, but it sounded like it was uh, getting ready to uh, shift over maybe to one of the other uh, SDRs. It, you know, it kind of is like a musical, like hot chairs, or, or what do they call that game, uh, musical chairs. Uh, <laughs> the conditions are in a constant state of flux. So as you, hopefully, and as it has been so far, as uh, one SDR ceases to be uh, the best, uh, there is another one uh, in the wings waiting to, um, you know, take its place. Uh, maybe that's luck, or I, I don't know, but that's the way it uh, seems to have been going so far. Roger, Roger. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, uh, it's the propagation. That is the propagation favoring uh, one spot uh, over another. Right now, you're, uh, you're at 8 to 9 uh, directly uh, from southern Indiana. This is quite a long haul. On uh, 40 meters uh, from northern New Hampshire all the way down uh, to uh, where uh, where you are. Uh, wow! Uh, by the way, the grass out here is starting to turn green, which is remarkable. Starting to turn green. There are no leaves on the trees yet. No leaves on the trees, although there are some buds showing up on some of the, especially bushes and smaller um, uh, smaller uh, trees. And yet I think uh, Monday night we may get uh, a little more snow up here. Uh, yesterday morning we had frost and 22 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, and that was on the 18th, of course, of May 2019. Uh, okay, Jim, I won't hold it too long. I'll turn it back to you, and uh, here's how you sound uh, direct uh, without an SDR. 
of the best. Uh, there is another one uh, in the wings waiting to, um, you know, take its place. Uh, maybe that's luck, or I, I don't know, but that's the way it uh, seems to have been going so far. Roger, roger. Okay, I wonder if you copied that, Jim, KC9VKV, K1G at L. Oh, Charlie, a perfect copy. You must be a 20 over in uh, Milford, PA now. That was just a perfect copy. And before you go now, I wanted to pick your brain or your memory just a little bit. I'm curious about uh, maybe the first uh, transmitter that uh, you had. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how old you might have been when you became a uh, amateur radio operator, but I'm just curious about what the first uh, transmitter might have been that, that you had as, uh, as a child. Or, or whenever you became an amateur radio operator. Operator. Okay, well, that's, uh, that it, it, in a way is a difficult question as to uh, which one I had. And you see, the first thing, my dad, uh, my dad was W2 Mike Uncle Peter, too much useless power, uh, W2 MUP. And uh, of course, he was, we lived in Elizabeth, uh, New Jersey, 15 miles southwest of New York. And uh, I can't, uh, I think he had a Hammerlin Super Pro as a receiver at the time. Uh, and, uh, and then uh, a Collins 32 V2, uh, a Collins 32 V2. There might have been something before that uh, because uh, I remember, uh, let's see, I was six years old. He would put me on the mic and uh, let me talk to people, even over in Germany uh, in 1938 in different countries, but mostly uh, stateside. We had a huge map of the United States on the wall, huge. And each time we had a QSO, we would put a little mark on the map. Uh, and uh, a lot of that was on uh, 10 meters. 10 meters, I got my ticket in the fall of 1948. Uh, 1948 was the class Baker, class B license. Of course, in those days, there were only two licenses, the class B and the class A. Now, with the class B, you could operate uh, uh, the band, uh, but you could not operate 75 and 40, and there was no 40-meter phone with CW. Uh, uh, you could not operate 75 or 20 meters. You could not operate either one. That was for the higher class, Class A. And you had to wait a whole year, one year, before you could get to Class A. That was a 40-question uh, 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 exam. Uh, and, of course, the uh, Class B was uh, 50. And you had to have, uh, you, you could miss 13 questions, but you could not get below 74% or you flunked. And you had to wait. Uh, you had to wait to get a, uh, a notice back from the FCC, uh, Federal Communications Commission. You either passed or you did not. Uh, but of course, uh, in those days, you had to have 13 words a minute uh, to get your license. The first time I tried it, I flunked. I, I passed the code, no problem, no problem. Uh, but boy, I flunked uh, the theory. Uh, but once I got my ticket, you have to wait one year before you can go for your Class A. And uh, back in the old days, uh, my dad, I can't remember uh, if there was anything below the, uh, there might have been before the Collins 32V2 uh, transmitter put out about 120 watts. Uh, and then uh, I inherited that uh, when I moved to Maine. And uh, he gave that uh, to me, and I used that uh, in Maine. Uh, and then I got uh, other uh, rigs uh, of various, um, <laughs> trying to remember them all. And uh, at my age, I start forgetting them, Jim. KT9VKV, K1G ZL, Clarksville, Northern New Hampshire. Roger, Roger, Charlie. Now the question is, was it all CW, or were you working a phone also? So. Uh, I was operating both, but mostly a uh, phone. I was, uh, I've always been mostly a phone man because um, I, I'd rather have, uh, you know, 
Uh, to me, it's a more of a direct communication, uh, direct communication, but um, as in one of your earlier uh, 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 reports we had made when I was <laughs> up at ARRL in the summer of 1951 as operator at W1AW, uh, they were strongly CW. Oh, boy, everything had to be CW. Oh, <laughs> and the um, 40 meters was strictly CW, and uh, those were the days. Those were the days. Uh, but uh, uh, but I've been more of a phone man, more of a phone man. But in the Navy, of course, uh, uh, I did use uh, uh, a lot of uh, CW. Go ahead. Oh, Roger, Charlie, well, you caught me in the middle of uh, coffee. But I shall, I shall press on. I have a narrow ledge where I keep my coffee stash, and I have to be very careful because actually the uh, the coffee cup is about only two thirds on the ledge. There is about a third of the coffee cup that is in space, so I have to be very careful when I put it back. Leastwise, there will be uh, problems in the. Uh, in the shack. <laughs> but anyway, most interesting, Charlie, I'm going to be picking your brain from time to time about your early life as an amateur radio operator. Uh, you know, 1948 is, uh, is pretty early there. My grandfather uh, was, um, you know, before the uh, FCC. So he, I don't think he ever took a tester. It was much later in his amateur career. Uh, career that he actually uh, uh, took a test but he uh, he worked uh, and met Marconi in uh, a Blue Ridge uh, there's a Blue Ridge observatory up around Massachusetts I believe and he met Marconi in uh, 1920 so I guess I get my uh, my amateur radio uh, hobby uh, uh, kind of naturally Roger Roger yeah, uh, that precedes uh, Marconi. A little bit precedes myself. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you're coming in directly uh, 10 over 9 right now. It's amazing. Uh, it's amazing. By the way, I've got somebody coming over here hopefully tomorrow, uh, tomorrow to look over my uh, antenna situation. I've got a lot of the ropes ready and pulleys, uh, and I've driven, uh, drawn schematics, and of course I'll show them in person. Hopefully this fellow will be able to uh, look at uh, this uh, disaster of an antenna, and, uh, and uh, he has to climb two poles uh, up uh, around 60 feet or so and uh, put on um, uh, pulleys and ropes. And we got to connect it to the top of the driven element here, which is a uh, complete mess. It's a total mess. Um, and it has been since October 23rd uh, due to that heavy wet snow we had back then. It's amazing. Uh, it works. It gets out of the backyard. And um, the only thing it saves me uh, is it's uh, down sloping uh, toward the west and southwest. Uh, Okay, Jim. Now, okay on that coffee. Yeah, I've spilled stuff in here, too. Don't you think I haven't? I have made a mess of this place. And uh, uh, right during a QSO, and uh, it almost made me uh, say a few words that I could have uh, had a look at my mailbox and see if I wasn't going to uh, <clears throat> get a note from uh, the powers to be, so to speak. Okay, Jim, I know you want to work other ones there, so I'll sign. And uh, this has turned out to be good. Here's a couple more seconds of your signal. Mister, it was much later in his amateur uh, career that he actually uh, uh, took a test. But he, uh, he worked uh, and met Marconi in uh, yeah, Blue Ridge, uh, there's a Blue Ridge Observatory up around Massachusetts, I believe, and he met Marconi in uh, 1920. Wow. <laughs> KC9, VKV, K1, GZL. 
Roger, Roger, Charlie. Well, thank you so much, sir, for sharing your um, early uh, days and recollections. And uh, we'll be uh, uh, visiting that uh, area uh, in the future because I just find early uh, days of amateur radio so interesting. You know, uh, the pioneering situation that uh, nobody knew what uh, amateur radio would become and what it is today, you know, with the tremendous radios like the uh, 7300, the 7610, and, you know, all the, all the the great new radios are just uh, unimaginable that uh, things would come to that from I'm assuming from uh, back in uh, 1948. So I find that really interesting, and I'll be I'll be picking your brain. So let me say threes to you, Charlie. Thanks for checking in. As always, love to hear from you, and uh, we'll uh, say threes for now, and uh, catch you later. Uh, this is uh, KC9 VKV and the Friday afternoon QSO Vlog Network, and uh, what we're all about is we are recording. Recording uh, from 3.30 Eastern Daylight Time till 5 Eastern Daylight Time. And if you have a radio you want to check out, uh, give us a shout. We are recording. And then we'll post the whole recording up on YouTube. And if you do a call letter search for Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor, that will take you to our QSO Vlog page. And uh, on that page you'll find a QSO entitled My Group Air Check 5 10 19 which is today's date my group air check 5 10 19 uh, this is uh, kc9 vkv i think there was a, a sugar uh, come back station and repeat your call again slowly alpha uh, and uh, phonetically please Oh, a mobile. Uh, well, first, what's the name? What's the name there? I'm sorry, was that Dell? Okay. Uh, now, gosh, uh, I would love to work with you for a minute. Uh, if you can, you uh, get to some of the parts of your radio uh, in the mobile. Get to some of the parts of your radio uh, in the mobile. Well, yeah, of course. I'm giving you all the audio I can. I'm, I'm just a little bit of a microphone issue here. Now, it's, it's not, uh, well, you know, obviously a uh, level is uh, uh, interesting, but uh, I was thinking from the standpoint of EQ, does your radio uh, uh, have EQ in it? Ah, oh, Roger that, because uh, I was just uh, thinking that microphone tends to be a little mid-rangey, and it might be a situation where if you cranked in um, some top-end EQ, it would add a lot of definition to your audio, Roger. Roger, Roger, on that. Yeah, I, I uh, this is uh, a generic Yeah, I just went to uh, Alexandria SDR. I was on the Raleigh SDR. I've got four SDRs I'm running this afternoon, in addition to my local uh, receiver. I'm running uh, Rochester SDR, Raleigh SDR, uh, Milford PA SDR, and Alexandria, Virginia SDR. And they're all on a rotary switch uh, along with my, uh, my regular radio audio. So I can just, uh, in about a minute, uh, uh, sorry, about a second and a half, I can run all five audio inputs and find the hottest one. Roger. Uh, you are, uh, let's see, 5 dB above the Alexandria, Virginia SDR. Uh, noise level. 
You are 5 dB above the Alexandria, uh, Virginia SDR noise level. Uh, so uh, what I would advise maybe if you don't have uh, EQ in your radio would be if you uh, got a, um, a condenser hand mic that would uh, fit that radio if uh, you know you can take uh, if you have a DC on your audio uh, a pin on your mic uh, you could run a condenser mic a hand mic on that radio and it would just uh, clarify the top end uh, articulation uh, immensely Roger the top end uh, articulation uh, immensely Roger Roger that's good Oh, uh, Roger, Roger. Well, you're coming in, and again, what was your look? What's your location? Roger, I'm starting to lose you a little bit there. I, I, again, if uh, if your audio was just a little more articulated, I could copy your words uh, a lot better. It is the fault, uh, I think, of that microphone that is not uh, too well articulated in the upper frequency range like a, a condenser mic would be, or like you could bring that mic around through uh, EQ, probably, or, or at least helpful to some degree. But let me say threes for now, and uh, like I say, we will be posting posting this up on YouTube so you can kind of hear what your radio sounds like and understand uh, the situation as far as the articulation of the audio uh, when you listen back to it uh, on our uh, QSO Vlog page. So, and again, if you go to uh, YouTube and do a call letter search for Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor, that will take you to our QSO Vlog page. And on that page, you'll be looking for QSO entitled My Group Air Check. 51019. My group air check 51019, which is uh, today's date. Roger, Roger. Well, it does do me a very good job. Yeah, I, I follow your YouTube channel and uh, see the videos up there. So uh, I'll give it a, a watch and a listen, and uh, I'll try and uh, see what I can do to get a better mic. So uh, I'll play 7 3 for now, and uh, I'll give you another go next week, uh, next Friday, after I'll see what I get hooked up to this thing here. So you take care and uh, enjoy listening to the uh, different GSOs here. So take care, 7 3. See you later. So we will see Joe Sosmogel. Roger, Roger. And the handle there was Dell. Roger. Great, great, because I didn't really copy the first part of that phonetics. I only copied the last part, and I knew your name wasn't Hell. <laughs> so process of elimination, Dell. All right. <laughs> you have a good afternoon, Dell. And, uh, yeah, check in next Friday if you have the opportunity, and uh, let me know what you think about the recording. We, have, we go to great lengths to uh, get the best recording we can, uh, whether it's on our uh, receiver or um, we've tried to set up a kind of a grid across the uh, the uh, uh, southeast uh, United States. Uh, we do pretty well from Montreal to Miami usually and uh, New York to New Mexico, but uh, we usually seem to favor the um, uh, north uh, east, I guess it is. So we've tried to set up a grid in that area by uh, running the uh, Raleigh uh, SDR, the Rochester SDR, uh, the Milford PA SDR, and the Alexandria, Virginia SDR. Kind of a, kind of a, a a grid that uh, one might be hotter than the other. Now, you never can tell about SDRs. I mean, even if you live in the town where there is an SDR, if you live too uh, far away, you know, uh, even in the same town, uh, sometimes, uh, you know, it's just, just like usual. Uh, you have to get a relay from San Francisco or someplace. But uh, SDRs are interesting because they do offer you other possibilities, uh, not uh, 
uncertainties but possibilities of receiving somebody better uh, than your local antenna and that's that's what it's all about we want to try to to get to there's a lot of hundred watt stations that uh, 40 meters uh, the condition it is today uh, you do a 400 mile trip uh, you're lucky to be coming in at uh, maybe a three unless you've got real good conditions and you, you might come in a, at a seven or eight even possibly but but uh, what we're looking for is uh, you know better recordings uh, so we can really hear the audio as clean as possible so this is uh, kc9 vkv and the friday afternoon qso vlog page uh, network and if you have um, a radio that you want to check out the audio uh, give us a shout we're standing by it's kc9 vkv It was an Alpha station. Uh, come back with a call sign again. Amanda, zero, Michael, kilo, Alpha. Amanda, zero, Michael, kilo, Alpha, St. Louis, Missouri. Ah, I copied St. Louis, uh, Missouri, Missouri there. Uh, what's the name? The name on this end is Ray. Romeo, Alpha, Yankee. Romeo, Alpha, Yankee. Ray. I got you, Ray. What radio are you running today? I'm running an FT-990. Just think about it. You know the FT-990. That's the same radio this is. Uh, I am running a, also a Yezu FT-990. Mine's uh, pretty heavily modified coming and going, but uh, yours is uh, sounding good. You might be uh, hitting your uh, ALC just uh, just a little hard. Uh, sounded maybe just a tinge of distortion there. It sounds like maybe overdriving just a tad, Roger. Okay, I'm going to bring it back just a little bit so i let you know there. Roger. Yeah, usually uh, when I set up a radio, I'm trying to uh, get that radio to be as loud as it is, but at the same time uh, as peaceful <laughs> as it can be. And I, I usually shoot for about a 3 dB dynamic range, which would mean that the average percent of peak modulation would be somewhere around 85%, which is a pretty loud signal, Roger. Uh, it's come down. I would say uh, look at your ALC, and uh, what you want to do on that ALC is be running uh, from uh, the midpoint, uh, mid-scale to uh, two-thirds on your ALC. So if you know how to bring your ALC up, uh, take a look at it, your next transmission, and then uh, through your mic gain, uh, bring that ALC where it's reading. You know, you want to keep it out of the red. You want it to be running mid-scale to two-thirds. Roger. Okay, okay. Uh, your audio is uh, sounding great as far as EQ and the, the microphone uh, cuts uh, really well. I'm using one of these Heil microphones over here. Heil, uh, the Heil microphone, i got two cartridges on this Heil microphone. The GM5, I think you know which one I'm talking about, the gold microphone. Uh, Roger, Roger. Yeah, dynamics are, are great, and you know, Bob uh, and his microphones have, have always been uh, dynamic, but only recently, and right, right around the time of the 7300, did he start using uh, condenser mics, which I, I applaud him for that, because it's a much, much, uh, I think, a more fully articulated microphone in the top end than the dynamic microphones, by and large. Happens. Okay, I'm bringing it down now. Yes, yeah, I'm trying to look at it. Okay, okay, that might be a little better. What do you think? Yes, sir. I think you've got a handle on it now. Uh, it looks like you're running about 3 dB, and like I say, that's that's a that's a pretty fat signal, Roger. It's it's pleasant, uh, you know. You you <laughs> some some audio, you know. It just is uh, so uh, well. <laughs> yours are sounding great. Roger, we're located uh, next door to Louisville, Kentucky. We're just across the river from Louisville in uh, New Albany, Indiana. Uh, and uh, we're, so we're about three miles uh, from downtown Louisville. Like I said, it's across the river. Gosh, Ray, you seem to have faded down just a little bit. Come back and uh, give me a couple of words, and I'll check some other SDRs to see if I have a better signal, Roger. Okay, okay, okay. Later on, Roger. 
Roger. Uh, Alexandria, Virginia is uh, the main one at the moment. So, uh, uh, and you did fade down. Uh, is my signal back up to you? Yeah, uh, uh, okay. Roger, Roger, Ray, and uh, we are recording, so if you want to hear your radio, if you uh, go to YouTube and do a call letter search for Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor, that will take you to our QSO VLOG page, and you'll be looking for a QSO entitled My Group Air Check 51019. My Group Air Check 51019, which is today's date, and uh, we'll be posting that to YouTube in the next uh, couple of days. So it will be a couple of days from now before it's, uh, it's available on YouTube. So have a good afternoon there, Ray, and that radio sounding good. Threes to you. This is KC9VKV and the Acuso Vlog Network. If you've got a radio you want to check out the audio, give us a shot. KC9VKV. I think I copied a Charlie to something. Come back with a call sign again. Sign again. Yes, uh, Kilo Charlie 3 Delta Victor Tango. Ah, uh, Roger, Roger. Uh, and what's the name there? Name there? Uh, try one more time, please, sir. Okay, I got uh, Alpha Romeo Kilo, the last part, is that correct? That's correct. Okay, I'll give it another try here. Okay, that's Mark. M A R K. I got you, sir. Mark. Roger. Roger. Okay, it looks like I'm uh, pushing into the uh, ALC. Uh, maybe a bit heavy right now. You're checking out people's audios, if I understand the QSL. Oh, that's correct. That's correct. What you want to be is between mid-scale and two-thirds on your ALC. Uh, the idea is that uh, you just stay out of the red. You don't want to get... You know, when you get your feet in the red, you know, then you track it all over the place and people get upset. So if you just uh, stay out of the red on your ALC, and I suggest mid scale to two thirds would do that. Roger? Roger. Okay, uh, I would suggest, do you know how to uh, get to your, uh, your uh, audio uh, equalization? Uh, well, this is a rather old set, so uh, it's, it's not an SDR. It's a fishing and analog set. It's probably about 30 years old, over. Ah, so you don't have uh, inboard uh, EQ uh, uh, controls? Controls. I'm only copying you about uh, 2 dB above uh, uh, Milford uh, PA SDR's noise level. I'm uh, only copying you. Th I'm copying you through the uh, Milford PA SDR, and you're about uh, 2 dB above their local noise level. Roger. Roger. All right. Okay. Yeah. Back to the original setting there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I have you on that. Uh, uh, your call sign, I got a KC9, but uh, I don't have the rest of it. Your suffix, if you would repeat that for me, uh, please, slowly and phonetically. Uh, roger, Roger, Roger. The call sign is Kilo Charlie 9 Victor Kilo Victor. I repeat, Kilo Charlie 9 Victor Kilo Victor. And the name is Jim, Juliet India Mike. Jim Mike. Jim, I got you on that. Uh, KC9, uh, uh, Victor Kilo, Victor. Okay, fine there. Okay. Well, very good then. Uh, uh, speaking with you, you probably have a lot of other people you want to talk to, but uh, I have more QSL topics if you wish to go ahead. 
Uh, well, um, <laughs> I would just give you suggestions on your radio. Uh, usually I suggest uh, if you have a compressor to put that compressor in line, uh, but only at about a three. If your compressor is a, a, zero, a 1 to 10, I would run it on a 3. If it's 10 to 100, I would run it on 30. So you just want to introduce the uh, compressor, uh, not uh, drastically, but just uh, marginally, uh, 3 out of 10, that starts the uh, fattening process. Roger, Roger. Roger. Yeah, uh, this radio just simply has a uh, processor button. Let's let's uh, let's take it off and see what happens. Hold on. Okay, now uh, I I have the uh, processor off and I uh, get closer to the mic to see that uh, the dip in the ALC at all. So I don't know how this sounds. Uh, your peak 100% uh, uh, level is the same with or without the processor. Obviously, it's just a matter of the processor doing a little fattening over it not being in in line. But uh, sometimes, uh, uh, if you get too much uh, uh, processing, it takes actually it takes away from the ability to discern uh, words. And the, the whole game of communication is understanding the words that uh, the other party is speaking. So uh, I think uh, in, in furtherance of that cause, I usually am in favor of uh, quite uh, active uh, uh, top-end EQ, and uh, sometimes we have to uh, switch out our old uh, dynamic mics for uh, the newer condenser mics if our radio is capable of uh, running them, which means, uh, unless you want to get really complicated, that the uh, uh, radio audio cable has a DC on it, like the, the newer radios, you know, and if you have that, then you can run a, a, a condenser hand mic, uh, which is really an electret hand mic, and you'll wind up with a lot better uh, active uh, top end, which really Really helps when you get into marginal situations. Like if you're giving somebody a 40 over, I mean, you could use a barbed wire fence and, uh, you know, put two uh, uh, cups, uh, what are they, foam cups uh, together and talk that, that way if you if you got that kind of signal. But if you're uh, like 90% or 80% of the transmissions that you're somewhere around uh, in the noise, uh, then you want your audio to be as our articulated as possible to where they can understand the words you're speaking, although you're technically under their noise level. I mean, you, sometimes they don't even see your signal above their noise level, but if your audio is articulated, they can understand the words. Roger? Roger? Okay, yes, Roger, and, and okay, and uh, so that, uh, yeah, this is rather old set. I've been looking, uh, considering uh, uh, replacing this radio with a, uh, uh, I bought it used uh, from uh, someone that I know, and, uh, but uh, anyway, uh, ICOM 1700 seems to be very popular. They hit a very good price range with that radio, and uh and so that I've also looked at IC7100, uh, that uh, considering uh, uh, a station in a, a box there that covers everything on up through uh, UHF, I believe. But uh, it has B-Star and also Yaesu is uh, featuring the uh, C4FM and uh, some of their sets now. Uh, so that, uh, well, you know, I'm going to be making some decisions on new equipment here, QSL. Oh, Roger that. Well, if you get a chance, uh, <laughs> you'll fall in love with the ICOM 7300. It's a lot of dough, but it's a lot of radio. And it's just such a such a beautiful radio. Now, mostly my experience with that radio is uh, uh, audio uh, transmit setups. Uh, I, I don't do anything with a receiver because I don't get to, to play with that much, but uh, I have uh, played with about 130 to 140 setups on uh, ICOM 7300s, and they're just a, just 
just a beautiful radio, and I, you would be it would be worth every cent uh, if you if you were to get that. Uh, and uh, the thing is, uh, th that hand mic that comes stock with a seventy three hundred is just an outstanding microphone. It's just uh, you know it's an electric condenser microphone, and it just shows off that radio so good. About the only thing that you would need to get would be a windscreen that you could put over the hand mic, uh, and that would solve any of the uh, the problems that that mic might have uh, right at the moment uh, you have to work that microphone uh, across it rather than into it because it is an electret microphone but if you were to be running uh, that microphone with a windscreen oh gosh it would just be beautiful Roger Roger okay fine yes all right uh, okay well as I uh, as I pursue things there uh, you know, I belong to a local group here, which is the Montgomery Amateur Radio Repeater Group, and uh, um, you know, there's a debate in the club what repeaters they're going to put up or what capabilities they're going to get uh, with the repeater, whether they're going to go C4 or FM or they're going to do a uh, uh, D-Star. Uh, but uh, Jason has been rather, uh, I guess, aggressive in, in uh, fielding uh, their uh, repeater uh, systems uh, for uh, relatively inexpensively. So it remains to be seen what's done on that. Now, the IC7300, that goes up to, what, uh, uh, 6 meters, uh, 7100 to cover the well. And I don't know much about that uh, that setup there. Perhaps you may know something more about it, QSL. Uh, Roger. Well, the, um, the um, 7610 uh, has a, a beautiful item. It's called Drive. And what Drive is is a um, uh, external... Um, audio expansion situation where they can, you know, like I usually try to uh, set up radios with about a 3 dB dynamic range because it's uh, usually uh, clean and uh, it does have a little life in the audio. It's not up against the wall. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So it is pleasant and it is loud. Uh, but the 7610 with that drive control can take right on from where the uh, uh, the other radio leaves off and can take that uh, dynamic range. I've seen that 7610 do half a dB of uh, dynamic range audio. And that means that, you know, if you were to be looking at, uh, like I was looking at the audio of that uh, uh, from my receiver output, you know, where you usually have a VU meter that's flopping around, da, 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 when you reach a half a dB of dynamic range, that meter no longer is moving like a, a VU meter. It looks more like a plate, uh, plate uh, uh, voltage meter. It just is quivering right there at uh, zero level. You know, it's just uh, maybe a half a dB back then, then up to zero. So as they speak, instead of that meter moving around like you would think, it's just hanging up there, and that's that is because of that drive capability. So that basically, I think, from the transmit side, is the only uh, real difference between the 7610 and the uh, uh, the other radio from ICOM. ICOM. And I think the band is uh, going variable on us. Uh, you dropped down uh, pretty low there. We got about a uh, uh, three, uh, an S3 uh, uh, noise level here, and you're speaking about an S5. And so, but uh, I think the band is, is, is sort of following us. But certainly appreciate the information that uh, you've given me, and that there's just more to think about there. So, uh, all right. Well, I'll send me to Jim. Uh, uh, do you have a, um, a QRZ? I'll put you in the QRZ uh, right now. And uh, so, 73, Jim, thank you. This is uh, KCC DBC. I'm clear with KC9, Victor, Kilo Victor. Roger, Roger, Mark. And just to give you an example, uh, let me drop down to 100 watts. Uh, we are at 100 watts now. This is uh, 100 watts, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and that's back to a KW. So that's the, uh, that's the difference between a KW and 100 watts. Roger. That's Roger. Roger, that was one S here. 
Roger, Roger. Well, let me say threes, Mark, and uh, if you get a chance, uh, drop back by next uh, Friday afternoon between uh, uh, 3.30 and 5 uh, Eastern Daylight Time. Love to hear what you have been up to and uh, all that stuff. So we'll say threes for now, and uh, you have a good afternoon and a good weekend. Uh, this is KC9 VKV and the QSO Vlog Network. If you've got a radio, you want to check out the audio, give us a shout. We are recording. Recording. Okay, I was just uh, searching through the SDRs. I heard a couple of stations. Uh, the loudest one. Come back. And this is KC9 VKV. It didn't copy anybody that time, so what I wonder that means. <laughs> uh, this is uh, Kilo Charlie 9 Victor, Kilo Victor, and the Friday afternoon Kiss of Vlog page. If you've got a radio you want to check out, give us a shout. We are recording between now and 5 uh, Eastern Daylight Time, and then uh, within a couple of days we'll post the whole hour and a half uh, QSO up on YouTube, and you can go and uh, uh, do a call letter search for Kilo Charlie 9, Victor, Kilo Victor, and then we'll take you to our QSO Vlog page, and on that page, uh, well, I think we have, uh, gosh, what is it, 560 uh, QSOs. I thought it was 650, but it's it's uh, 560 at the moment. And so when you go to our QSO Vlog page, uh, you'll be looking in this case for uh, a QSO entitled My Group Air Check 51019. My group, air check, 51019. This is Kilo Charlie 9, Victor, Kilo Victor. Uh, Kilo Charlie, something about 31, who is that? Uh, repeat the call sign uh, phonetically and slowly. Yes, sir, the call is uh, with 9 Slash Victor 31 Kilo Charlie. Over. Okay, I got everything. There was a W9 and then the next thing after W9. Could you repeat that, please? Slash or a stroke. W9 stroke Victor 31 Kilo Charlie. Over. I got you, sir. Now, now what does that mean? Where are you from and what's that all about? That call sign. Hello, hello. Sorry, my radio decided to stop transmitting just now. Can you still copy me? Uh, yes, I think you might be down just a little bit though, Roger. Hmm, okay, not sure what happened there. But uh, uh, answer to your question, the home call is Victor 31 Kilo Charlie with it, which is uh, Belize call. I am currently in Waukegan, Illinois. In fact, I believe I spoke to you uh, maybe as much as a month ago, a few weeks ago for sure. Uh, I was actually on another radio. But uh, today I'm in the base. I'm on the base radio. Go ahead. Uh, Roger that. I think I remember your call, and I remember trying to figure out what it all meant. You know, when it gets past <laughs> three syllables or three letters, I'm lost. You know, I, I, uh, oh gosh. Well, anyway, listen. Uh, would you like to uh, fatten that audio up just a little bit? I've got, uh, I've got some plans for your radio if you would like. Okay, I think I have. Uh a three band EQ is all I have on this radio. Um, I'm sure I'd sure like to hear up your opinion on the audio. Go ahead. All right, audio is nice and crisp, but your um, basically unprocessed audio from the standpoint of the fatness of the signal. So what I would be primarily doing would be, I would suggest to you, if you wanted just a fatter signal, uh, we would read, right now your dynamic range is somewhere around uh, 10 dB. That is that what uh, di dynamic range is, is the difference between the loudest part of your audio and the softest 
part of your audio. And right now being unprocessed, uh, your audio is kind of moving uh, the, f the full dimensions of the meter from very low to very high. So uh, what I would suggest is that if you took your compressor and put it on about a three, in, uh, put your compressor in line at about a three, very, very nominal amount of compression, that starts the uh, fattening process. It's not uh, with a three that you're going to be sucking up the mooing of cows in the South 40, but it is a kind of beginning of the uh, the fattening process. Roger. Yeah, Roger on that. Okay. <laughs> well, let me see if I can find a compressor in this menu here. Uh, might be a couple steps to get into that. So, give me uh, a few seconds here. Let me just run through this menu and. Uh, uh, Roger that, Roger that. Uh, not a problem, not a problem. It um, it can be called a processor. Uh, sometimes they uh, they uh, label it all kinds of uh, weird things, you know. But to me, a compressor is a compressor. So call the thing a compressor. Uh, don't call it a processor because to me a processor denotes other capabilities other than compression if all it does is compress call it a compressor oh, it's uh, yeah well it's kind of like uh, uh, icom calling the uh, eq control a, a tone control where yes it is a a tone control but uh, most folks perhaps might know it better as equalization or eq control and then when you get into that a uh, tone control as ICOM calls it, they refer to things as treble and bass. Uh, you know, to me, that would be uh, high frequency control and uh, low frequency control. But uh, you, they're technically correct calling it uh, treble and bass, or treble and bass, <laughs> as the case may be. Anyway, uh, I was just wondering if you had found your uh, compressor yet. Uh, sure enough, I have here in the menu some of the stars. Compressor level and got a percentage. So it was at three, and uh, I'm not sure how much. Let me see. Okay, it goes all the way up to a hundred. So I guess maybe uh, thirty. I guess let's see. I'm not sure if I have to. Uh, okay, I just set the uh, compression level to thirty. And uh, let me know what you think about that. Uh, and I did not write your call sign down. Uh, this is 59 stroke v 31 k uh, Roger, and what's the name there? Uh, the name is Dennis. Uh, Roger, Dennis. Yeah, uh, I think, you know, if that's a 0 to 100, then I think 30 w w would be the... Uh, best place. Uh, that would be probably, you know, the, the proper place. 30 out of 100. Uh, I would put it right there. Roger. Okay, well, it's at, uh, it's at 30 now. That is 30, and um, I'm not sure where the EQ is at. I think you said the EQ was fine anyway. But that is 30 on the compression, and I do notice a difference here. I think I'm seeing a difference. This is a SDR radio, by the way. If you put that call sign into uh, QRZ, uh, just the way I set it, you'll see a black transceiver on my desk called the Qlit SDR transceiver. That's what I'm talking on uh, currently. Could you give me your call sign for the record there? Uh, go ahead. Roger. Call sign is Kilo Charlie 9 Victor Kilo Victor. And I repeat, Kilo Charlie 9 Victor Kilo Victor and the name is Jim Juliet India Mike okay okay Jim I think I got it there KC9 VKV Jim all right so did you notice any difference there from 3 to 30 on the compression go ahead uh, yes, I did. Uh, you're starting to fatten up a little bit audio-wise. Now, uh, can you go to your ALC meter? Can you go to your ALC meter? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, there we uh, Let me try that again. Yeah, I don't go into this, uh, into the menu of this thing too very often, but there is a transmit. Uh, 
radio menu, I mean transmit menu, I don't see, uh, AGC, hmm. I don't see any ALC and, uh, for my meter options, I don't think I have an ELC option on my meter. Go ahead. Roger, I, I think you probably do, but it's just a matter of finding it. Some uh, some of those radios, you just tap the meter and it uh, toggles uh, between uh, different settings. Roger. Yeah, QSL on that, okay. Well, I think I need to play with this one some more. <laughs> That does not work for this. Uh, it's got signal on the top and power on the bottom while I'm transmitting. And I think it's the same way in receive. Let me see when I'm receiving what it does. Uh, this would be a transmit uh, uh, item. AOC is uh, looking at your audio after the limiter. Uh, it is uh, telling you exactly your audio level in transmit. And uh, when you find it, you might take note that when you find your ALC, you want to make an adjustment with your mic gain control to where the ALC meter is moving between mid-scale and two-thirds. You want to uh, take it close to max, but stay out of the red. Don't get no red on you, Roger. Okay, QSL on that. Uh, yeah, I don't see a, a ALC in any of the menus here, CADC level and ADC transmit. Uh, but I don't see anything for the ALC. I guess we missed uh, something. Uh, this yeah, it might be uh, incomplete production here. Uh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Roger. Well, they probably I have named it some, uh, uh, it's like ICOM naming, you know, things different. But uh, I tell you where you would find it, in your audio setup for your radio. In the audio setup, uh, they, will, they will get you into the ALC mode as you uh, set up your audio. Because, uh, like I say, it's better than a buddy down the street to tell you uh, how your audio uh, level is. It will tell you exactly what your audio level is. And what you want to do is uh, be running a mid from mid-scale to two-thirds on the ALC meter. Now sometimes, uh, you know, the ALC meter is uh, part of the multimeter that does a lot of things. So you have to look at the ALC um, excursion uh, uh, a what do they call that? Uh, on the meter, they will say ALC, and they will show the range of the ALC meter. Uh, it's it's not necessarily from hard left to hard right uh, when it's looking at ALC. Sometimes the ALC scale only runs from the left to uh, to the middle of the meter. So in that case, you still want to run that. Uh, uh, you know the. Uh, that meter and and just uh, to try to stay out of the red, stay out of the red, and just run it in the middle of that uh, uh, scale to uh, two thirds. Roger. Okay, Roger on that there, uh, uh, Jim. Yeah, I do see a little movement behind, but uh, that's corresponding to my my uh, SWR. There's a there's a green reading that's showing power, and then a red reading behind it. But that red reading is showing the SWR, so <laughs> I guess I'll spend some time playing with it and see if there is an AL ALC option there. But for now, I I'm going to have to just see with this. I just had my wife and my daughter call me to go pick them up, so <laughs> I'm going to have to cut this one uh, short, uh, Jim. KC9VKV, I'm going to turn it back to you, and then I'll be uh, clear on your final, Jim. Uh, Roger, Roger, Dennis. Well, you'll you'll find it there in your audio setup for your transmitter. Uh, that they will show you. Uh, uh, they will be in the ALC mode, so you can set your level. That's what the ALC is all about: uh, setting your mic level to the to the proper uh, level. So uh, you know that's why we we put the limit the compressor in there and get all that stuff we're going to do first, and then go set the level after we do everything. So uh, it, we can get an accurate reading, uh, and so we don't uh, over over mod. And that ALC is all about keeping your audio uh, from. Uh, 
doing uh, nasty things to your neighbors, <laughs> like like trash on the side vans and stuff. So if you stay within the ALC guidelines, uh, you'll be you'll be great. And I recommend uh, mid scale to two thirds. So Dennis, uh, let me say threes to you, sir. Have a good afternoon and a good weekend. Good talking at you. And if you get a chance, to check back in next uh, Friday. Uh, this is KC9 VKV, and this is the QSO Vlog Network. If you've got a radio you want to check out, uh, give us. Oh, and uh, Dennis, incidentally, we are recording uh, between now and uh, five Eastern Daylight Time, and uh, then uh, posting it up on YouTube within a couple of days. And if you go to YouTube and do a call letter search for Kilo Charlie Nine Victor Kilo Victor, that would uh, take you to our QSO Vlog page, and on that page you'll be looking for QSO uh, entitled My Group Air Check Five. 1019 should be on page one my group air check 51019 this is kc9 vkv and if you've got a radio you want to check out give us a shout sierra whiskey station come back with the call sign again king bravo five sierra whiskey uh, roger k4 hew king bravo five Sierra Whiskey, King Bravo 5, Sierra Whiskey. Uh, what's the name there, sir? King Bravo 5, Sierra Whiskey, and you copy KC9 VKV. Uh, King Bravo 5, man, you were on steroids there for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you were you were like a twenty over for about twenty seconds. I don't know where you where you went. Uh, try it again. This is KC nine VKV. Yeah, King Bravo five Sierra whiskey. Uh, you're way down in the mud. You are uh, beneath my noise level. So uh, let me say three. Uh, maybe uh, conditions might uh, peak up again, like they were just uh, for that brief moment. Uh, boy, you took my head off. And then uh, that's Mother Nature. She's playing with us. Anyway, uh, King Bravo. Five Sierra Whiskey, we'll try it later with you, sir. Uh, three is for now. Uh, and uh, the other station in there, what was the call sign? Kilowatt 4, Hotel Echo Whiskey. Kilowatt, uh, kilowatt 4, uh, what was the rest? Hotel kilowatt Echo Whiskey. Four, Roger, and what's the name there, sir? Hey, here's Joe, Julia Oscar Echo. Echo, and we've spoken in the past. Roger, Joe. I'm copying you on the uh, Milford uh, PA. Roger. Hey, Roger. Roger, Roger. Um, I have the ICOM 7300, and I've uh, been told it sounded a little too bassy. Uh, so I turned my bass down to a plus two and a treble uh, up to zero with a compression of three. And I'm watching. A uh, station standby. I'm in QSO at the moment. At the moment. Uh, I think you were right. It uh, probably does sound a little on the muffly side. I would uh, back the bass down uh, one more click. I would roll off the bass one more click in EQ and add one click at top end uh, EQ and see what we got there. Roger. Roger. Okay, I've done that and uh, bass now is at a plus one and treble is at a plus one. And uh, how does that sound? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You got it going there, buddy. I would tell you if you get it. Are you uh, on the 7300 with the uh, stock hand mic? Stock hand mic? Yes, it is. And I'm going to put a wind sock over it, but for now it's completely stock. Roger, yeah, I would uh, recommend uh, definitely a windscreen, and uh, I, I think uh, one is almost foolish to replace such a beautiful microphone, although, you know condenser uh, dust mic uh, might be more convenient but uh, just the basic uh, operation of that uh, supplied uh, hand stock hand mic is just such a beautiful compliment to that radio you know I, I just uh, fall in love with that signal Roger Roger yeah it's hard to beat uh, I've been told uh, I'm running power and I've been told where are you located and everything is stock 100 watts no amp and I'm actually in a motor home with a uh, vertical antenna, 40 meter uh, Eagle One antenna mounted on the rear ladder. So that's all I got. <laughs> 
Roger, beautiful job, beautiful job. Now, you might be hitting your ALC just a little hard, but I'm not going to say anything because the audio is not distorted, and it is nice. You're running about 2.5 dB dynamic range, Roger. Range, Roger. Oh, that's what I was going to ask. You're in, you're in my uh, head there. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I don't want to overdrive it, but 2.5 uh, is just about where I want to be. Yeah, it's uh, just loud, loud. Uh, couldn't improve on that. Just out of curiosity, I'm assuming that you are running your uh, uh, compressor at about a 3 out of 10? Out of 10? That's exactly where it is. Roger, Roger. Yes, uh, the magic point there, that radio is just uh, just beautiful. Roger. Roger. And my mic gain is at 85%, and I want to know what effect mic gain has on the whole process. Can you explain that to me? Yes, sir. The mic gain is the beginning of the audio chain. Um, most folks on the 7300 are probably running around uh, 50%. But uh, on the other hand, you know, it's what you can get away with, uh, and uh, it's up to your AOC. I mean, theoretically, we're just talking theory here, that your ALC uh, reading is a deciding factor about what your modulation will be, level will be. And uh, what you're looking for there is uh, between mid-scale to two-thirds on your ALC. Now, uh, you can push that uh, a little bit with that 7300 because it has uh, such a beautiful ALC, uh, and uh, you can uh, move um, just a little bit beyond uh, the uh, uh, 30, the 73 or 75 percent uh, uh, deflection, but you definitely want to stay out of the red. You don't want to be uh, driving that ALC into into the red, Roger. Roger. Okay, I understand. Yeah, it's, uh, it's hovering right at 50 on this scale, and um, I've never seen it go much beyond that. Uh, setting the mic game has little effect on that. Apparently, uh, it's like it's. Uh, Roger. Well, the uh, 7300 has an, just an outstanding limiter. I call it a hard, hard wall limiter, that it just doesn't want to let that signal uh, go past a uh, mid scale to two thirds. And it uh, really, the way it w where it's set, uh, as far as uh, at the point of uh, uh, of uh, operation for the limiter is just just perfect, and uh, the like the AOC is looking at the output of the audio uh, that is following the limiter. So you have in the sequence of events you have the the uh, mic gain, and then you have the compression, and then you have some processing uh, EQ wise and all that stuff, and then you get to the the uh, automatic limiter. Uh, which uh, is just in front of the ALC uh, meter monitor that sh that's looking at the output of the uh, of the limiter. So that's uh, essentially it. And what's happening when you turn up your mic gain, uh, then you're uh, you're making the comp the uh, compressor work a little bit, and you're also at the same time making that output uh, AOS the output uh, limiter work a little bit hard. Now the difference between the compressor and the limiter is the attack and release times. A compressor has a much much slower attack and release time. So by the fact that you're not really stressing it to work so, uh, absolutely uh, nanosecond timing, it can afford to, uh, uh, to compress a 20 dB and still not distort because it's not attacking the input uh, very quickly and it's not releasing uh, the uh, output very quickly. So a 20 dB range and uh, a compressor is a, a totally doable thing. But uh, when you get to a limiter, a limiter is a, a very quick attack time and very a quick release time. So because it's so quick, you don't want to push that uh, limiter more than 3 or 4 dB. That's about the maximum range of a limiter that has a instantaneous attack and release time, Roger. Of a limiter that has a instantaneous attack and release time, Roger. Okay, Roger, that, that's a good explanation. I, I, um, I'd like to try something and I'll let somebody else have a chance here. I'm, I'm at 50% mic gain right now. And uh, I'm going to I'm going to increase that um, when I unkey, and then I'll come back again. 
I'd like to hear if it sounds different, and I don't think this radio is going to let it sound any different, but I want to see what it does, okay? Uh, Joe, I was already copying the mail even bef before you turned it down, and I can tell you there is no difference in the peaks between where you were and wh after you pulled it down. The peaks were the same, but the average peak uh, was less when you pulled it down. So uh, after you pulled it down, your, uh, your average peak modulation went to probably about 5 or 6 dB. And uh, before you did that, where you were, with a mic gain of about 80, your average uh, peak modulation was uh, up to about uh, 85%. So it definitely makes a big difference in the fattening, Roger. So it definitely makes a big difference in the fattening, Roger. Okay, that, that makes sense. Uh, right now it's at 95% my game. I guess what I'm looking for is an optimal setting for doing DX. Obviously that would be more top end and less bottom end, I believe. Is that right? Uh, Roger, I think you're there. I think you're there. I think your signal uh, audio-wise could go either direction. And I think when you were running 80 on your mic gain, I thought that was uh, the ideal place. Were you not there uh, just before you turned down recently? The ideal place. Were you not there uh, just before you turned down recently? I was uh, at 85 when I originally called you. I dropped it to 50%, and then I increased it to 95 Right now, I'm back to 80%. You probably don't see a difference there, I'm guessing. Roger. Uh, well, I can see your dynamic range uh, moving. And like I say, that... Uh that limiter on their radio is a stonewall limiter, so it's keeping the peak at the same place. Uh, it, just as you drive harder, your average peak modulation comes up. So uh, where you were at about 80, looked to be about uh, 3 dB, 2.5, 3 dB uh, dynamic range, and I, I think uh, that's, uh, that's uh, fat very fat for uh, you know uh, all kinds of uh, applications i don't think you necessarily have to have a, a dx or contest uh, uh, situation you just need a fat audio signal that's uh, very well articulated on the top end and that means that that even though you might be in the noise level or you might be in the pile up they're going to hear your audio and understand what you're saying which is you know very important when they say go ahead Blank, blank, blank. Yeah, you know, very important. When they say, go ahead, blank, blank, blank. Okay, that's what I need. I think I'll get the super glue out and put a drop on each button here <laughs> and leave things kind of where they're at. Jim, I sure appreciate your help this evening. Uh, K4 ATW back to, we'll be clear in your final KC9, Victor, Kilo Victor. This is K4 ATW. Roger, Roger, and that's uh, Joe. Roger, Joe. Uh, good talking at you, sir. Enjoyed it. Uh, and uh, you have a, a good uh, Friday afternoon and a good uh, weekend coming up. Uh, and if you get a chance, uh, drop back by uh, next uh, Friday and we'll compare notes. Uh, we do it uh, between uh, 3.30 till 5 Eastern Daylight Time uh, Friday afternoons. And we have been recording this. And uh, so if you want to check out your audio, I have used a couple of SDRs. Uh, I think uh, the last one was the Alexandria, Virginia SDR, and I was also using the uh, Milford PA SDR. Uh, I didn't have a very good copy on my uh, my local receiver, so these are SDRs uh, that I have coming in. So anyway, uh, we'll be posting this up on YouTube in the next couple of days. So if you go to uh, YouTube and do a call letter search for Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor, that'll take you to the QSO Vlog page. And on that page, you'll be looking for a QSO entitled My Group Air Check 51019. My Group Air Check 51019, today's date. And it should be on page one. So uh, Joe, we'll say threes to you. You have a, a good afternoon, Roger. Roger, Roger, Jim. Thanks so much. I appreciate your help. And uh, KC9 VKV, this is K4HEW. Thanks much. 73. Roger, Roger. And I just noticed that that SDR had a slight glitch.
in it from time to time. So that's not your, that's not your doing. <laughs> that's the uh, SDR. So uh, threes to you, Joe, and we'll catch you later. Uh, this is Kilo Charlie Nine, Victor Kilo Victor, and this is the QSO Vlog Network. If you've got a radio you want to uh, check out the audio, give us a shout. This is KC Nine VKV. All right, I'm copying somebody on my local receiver that's way down towards my noise level. Uh, I don't know if we're going to be able to make a, a QSO out of it or not. Uh, come back and uh, let me see. Give me your call sign, slowly and phonetically. Kilo, November 4, Mexico, Kilo, November 4, uh, Tango what? Tango Oscar X-Ray. Uh, Roger, what's the name, please, sir? The name is Russ. Romeo Uniform Sierra Sierra. Uh, Roger, Russ. Uh, come back and uh, tell me about your antenna or something, and uh, let me see if I can find a better uh, copy on you, Roger. Ah, oh, Roger that. I did not find a better SDR copy on you, so I am copying you on my local antenna, and you are about 3 dB above my noise level. So we'll do uh, what we can do within the time uh, that we have. Uh, uh, would you be interested in uh, fattening up your audio signal, or, or what? All right, uh, the first thing I would do would be to go to my uh, compressor and uh, put that compressor, uh, engage that compressor and put it at about a three. If it's a three out of ten, I'd put it at a three. Roger, roger. This is KC9VKV, Russ, you still have a coffee? KC9VKV, uh, Russ, if you still have a coffee, uh, uh, let me know if you've uh, managed to get that uh, compressor in there at about a three, Roger. Yeah, I think uh, we might have had some uh, conditioned uh, uh, shifts there, Russ. Uh, I think I may have lost uh, your radio. Uh, try again. Let me see if I still have a copy on you. Okay, I could uh, I could hear you in there barely. You're about a dB above my noise level. Uh, so anyway, I would suggest uh, if you do you have that uh, compressor in there at a three uh, uh, level, Roger? I'm assuming that's a, a Roger. Okay, so now what you want to do is bring up your uh, your ALC meter. I think you can just tap your meter and it will toggle around to uh, show you uh, your uh, ALC uh, level. Roger, roger. All right, you're right at my noise level right now. Uh, I would suggest that you bring your mic level uh, but uh, grab your mic level and bring your mic level up until your ALC is reading mid-scale to two-thirds. Bring your ALC meter level up to where it's reading mid-scale to two-thirds as far as your mic gain control is concerned. Roger.
Yeah, unfortunately, uh, you are still about a, a dB above my noise, so uh, uh, just give me a Roger if you manage to do that last thing, Roger. I got you. Okay, let's move to uh, to uh, tone control. Um, uh, menu uh, system or settings. Uh, transmit tone control. You have two tone controls. I, w I need for you to uh, bring that uh, top end EQ, the treble EQ, up to about uh, uh, two clicks positive from where you are. Two clicks boost, or make it three. Three clicks boost from where you are on the treble. And I would take your, uh, your bass, uh, your um, bottom end uh, EQ, down one click. And uh, come back and uh, let me listen to you. All right, you're still now only <laughs> you're about a dB above my noise level. Uh, I, you know, if we get that EQ right, I'll be able to perceive what you're saying, although you're just one dB above my noise level, Roger. And I copied that, and you were just a dB uh, and a half above my noise level. So uh, uh, we're coming along. Hopefully Mother Nature won't uh, do any further degradation, and maybe she'll put a couple of S units uh, in, the, in the pot uh, to help us out some. Uh, we, can only, we can only help. So uh, now uh, what is your uh, reading on your, uh, uh, your meter there for... Uh, uh, your, <laughs> I have a blank, your ALC, what, what is the reading, Roger? Oh, I, your over was uh, <laughs> very good. <laughs> this is, I copied the rest. I think you, you're still not in the red on your ALC, Roger? That's all right, uh, out between five and Roger. So uh, mid scale uh, to uh, two thirds. Roger. That's a Roger. All right. I had a couple of good copies on you. Your audio sounds really good. So uh, let's uh, leave it at that for right now. If you get a chance, maybe check in uh, next uh, Friday and we'll uh, compare notes and uh, see how you've been uh, uh, doing and uh, what folks been talking about your audio. Roger. That was, uh, give me a phonetics on your call sign again, please, sir. Okay, uh, Q, November 4th, Tango Hot, Don't X-Ray. That's at the 73, thank you. Yes, sir, and, and the name was Russ, Roger? Yes, Russ, Romeo, Uniform, Sierra, Sierra. Roger, Russ. Well, uh, I'll be posting this audio up on YouTube in the next couple of days. So if you want to, if you want to check out a session that we did in Braille, uh, <laughs> uh, just uh, come to YouTube and do a call letter search for Kilo Charlie Nine Victor Kilo Victor, and uh, that will take you to our QSO Vlog page. And on that page, uh, there's a My Group Air Check. Uh, uh, it will be entitled uh, My Group Air Check Five Ten Nineteen. 5, 10, 19. Roger. That's a Roger. Uh, thank you. Roger, Roger. And just out of curiosity, uh, let me uh, give you uh, 100 watts to show what, what your signal sounded like uh, to me. Uh, there we go. We are uh, running right at 100 watts right now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that's back to the uh, KW. Roger, Roger. So I, I've lost you now not totally there, Russ. Uh, so we'll say threes for now, and uh, we'll see you next Friday if you get a chance. Uh, this is KC9VKV. There was a loud one that checked in just a moment ago. Uh, give me a shout. Uh, KC9VKV, standing by. Whiskey 4, Delta Charlie. Oh, that was uh, K4HEW. Whiskey 4 Station, uh, come back with your call sign, Whiskey 4 Station. Whiskey 4, Delta Charlie. Delta Charlie Lima, what's the name? Uh, the name is Carol, Jim. Uh, phonetics, please. <laughs> uh, Charlie Alpha Romeo Romeo 
Oscar Lima Lima. Uh, Roger Carroll, I, <laughs> I I would be spelling it the other way, the the uh, simplistic way. Uh, <laughs> but uh, what do I know? Anyway, uh, what uh, radio are you running, sir? Alrighty, I just uh, copied you a little bit better on the uh, Alexandria uh, SDR. Uh, come back and uh, tell me about your antenna so I can run the other SDRs and see if I can find a, a hotter one, Roger. The other SDRs and see if I can find a, a hotter one, Roger. Oh, Roger. HP mobile antenna on uh, ICOM 7100, Roger. Uh, Roger, Roger. The uh, Alexandria is the uh, leading SDR. You're about uh, 10 dB over noise on the Alexandria SDR, Roger. About uh, 10 dB over noise on the Alexandria SDR, Roger. Uh, so, Carol, do you still have a coffee? Uh, so, Carol, do you still have a coffee? Well, it seems like Mother Nature is playing games. We're uh, <laughs> we're about to turn into a pumpkin, and Mother Nature is uh, uh, taking out the uh, decibels instead of putting decibels in. Come on, lady, get on with it. Don't uh, don't be coy. Give us some ten overs or twenty overs. Uh, this is a KC9 VKV, and this is the uh, Friday afternoon QSO Vlog uh, network. If anybody has a radio that they want to check out the audio, uh, uh, give me a shout. Uh, this is KC9 VKV. The audio. Uh, give me a shout. Uh, this is KC9 VKV. Wait, did you? I just caught the last of somebody. Uh, come and repeat again, please. Again, please. Delta Uniform, W-A-D-U. The Delta Uniform Station, uh, what's the name? What's the name? My name is Ernie, Alpha Radio, November, India, General. Uh, roger, roger. And what kind of radio are you running today? Yeah, I'm running an Apache Lab and a 7000 DLP Mark II. Uh, roger that, roger that, and uh, tell me about your antenna system. I'm going to run through these SDRs again. Uh, roger that. I've got uh, about a three... Uh, on the uh, Milford PA SDR, about a three over there noise level, Roger. Oh, Roger. Okay, QSL. Uh, no, no, I can do. I can put on uh, some power here. I've got a uh, KTA 500, uh, the Elephant 500. If that'll help, over. <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> the short answer is fire that booger up. Of course, of course. That's. Uh, anymore, you're going to need that on 40 because uh, 40 is is not necessarily a friend. Uh, sometimes it can be very difficult. Uh, I hope you're already tuned up on 40 and ready to go. And all you got to do is hit the standby button. The button. Uh, yeah, that's exactly how it works. It's a uh, it's a uh, self tune. So it's as soon as I hit it, it uh, tunes itself. And now uh, uh, we got about 400 watts on, uh, so it should be. Uh, Taking a little bit more than three on the uh, on the meters there, over. Uh, Roger, I, hopefully I'll be able to copy you on my local antenna, so uh, come back and tell me um, something here for about uh, 10 seconds so I can look around again real quick and uh, see if I can find any better options. Roger? Roger. Okay, very good. Okay, very good. About uh, 2,900 uh, bandwidth on this uh, 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 Apache Anon uh, 7000 DLE Mark II. And um, I'm uh, pushing a little bit harder on the higher end because my voice uh, has a lot of lows in it and not as many highs. So uh, we've got the equalizer just set to push a little bit higher on the high end. And uh, at least on the scope here, it looks like it's uh, pretty even from the top to the bottom. So uh, uh, I'd be interested in any uh, constructive criticism or suggestions you might have or observations whatever you want to offer. KZ9BKV, I believe it is, is a W-A-D-U. 
Uh, Roger, Roger. Well, uh, let's see here. Your uh, audio is, sounds really good. Uh, it, you could uh, add a little bit more on the bottom end. Uh, uh, you're you're uh, kind of uh, mid-rangey now. Uh, the idea is that we could maybe uh, expand uh, from the top and the bottom. Uh, I would add, uh, uh, just out of curiosity, I would add uh, one, one click uh, boost on the base and one click boost on the top end or maybe two clicks uh, top end and I'm talking up there around uh, 3k something that uh, can give us some sibilance if you could uh, get a EQ around a 3k an audio boost uh, and uh, take it about 2 dB hotter than what it is Roger Roger yeah QSL I've, I've done that I clicked it up uh, it's actually 3.1k at the top end, so I gave it a uh, two clicks on that, and then the bottom uh, is uh, currently set at 32 uh, hertz, and I uh, gave it a click there. So does that help at all? Uh, yes, top end is looking real good. I would bring that uh, bottom end up to around 100 cycles. I would bring the bottom end up to about uh, 100 cycles and do my plus and minus uh, at that frequency. 30 cycles is, uh, is a bit low. So uh, I would want to be more in the uh, the uh, ebb and flow of the normal audio range. So I would use 100 cycles. And what's your what's your EQ at 100 cycles? Cycles. Uh, at a, at a uh, 125, I just pushed it up to about uh, plus, uh, plus, uh, plus four. Over. Oh, from uh, from a zero, or you just added four dB push at uh, 125 cycles? Cycles. Uh, 3 dB push at 63, so I kind of gradually brought up the, uh, the lower end there to uh, uh, be uh, about plus 4 at 125, and then uh, drops down a little bit at 250, and then coming back up kind of from 500 all the way up to 3100 over. Roger. Okay. Um, gosh, um, you don't don't worry about that uh, bottom end. That that thirty cycles. Uh, nobody's going to hear that or even perceive that. Uh, you you uh, probably up there around a hundred, hundred and fifty. Um, if uh, are you boosting at uh, f in your mid range? Mid range. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're boosting a little bit in the mid range. Oh, we have uh, the channel fool. <laughs> we do have the channel fool visiting us. Anyway, uh, I would uh, move those uh, mid-range, like I'm talking about 1KC, uh, I would move that to the flat. Uh, no, no boost at the, in that area, and uh, so you know if you're if you're flat in the mid range, then your your top end and your bottom end EQ uh, operates uh, more perceptively. You can hear that, but if you're boosting the mid range, you've got to overcome the mid range boost before the bottom and top even start to work. So I would flatten the uh, 1K area uh, as much as I could, Roger. I, yes, I would not uh, boost at 500. I would not boost at 1K. I would uh, get those two flat, and then uh, for the bottom end, uh, I would uh, again be looking at about maybe uh, 150 cycles, and uh, take that uh, again a couple of dB hotter than than what it was. Roger. Roger. Right now, is that uh, a um, is that a, a switchable EQ point or is it fixed EQ points? Points. No, no, I can set them wherever I want. Okay, so that one at the top, I would set that uh, uh, mid mid uh, uh, mid. Uh, 
uh, angle, not a wide band. Uh, I would uh, use a, a tighter uh, control to where it would be active uh, between, uh, say, uh, uh, 31 and uh, 20, 28, 29. We just want to catch the top end uh, uh, of the audio that you'd be transmitting. Roger. Roger. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, the, the top inside. Now I'm getting a little blow by from somebody <laughs> that has decided to uh, come around, uh, you know, within 3 dB of, uh, of a signal. And we've only been here for uh, an hour and a half, so uh, God bless them. <laughs> I don't understand the logic, but, uh, you know, I'm sure we're giving as good as we're getting, so uh, we shall press on. Uh, come back and uh, tell me about your antenna so I can uh, get some idea about... Uh, you know, a little longer uh, uh, voice uh, uh, signal. Roger. Roger. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, the antenna is a uh, Delta. I think it's a double T. I can't remember the model number. I think it's Delta Delta double T. Uh, it's a uh, it's a it's a full wave or full half wave. I should say on forty and and uh, short time one eighty. Roger, Roger. Yeah, um, let's go to um, 200 cycles and give me about, uh, maybe move one of your lower EQs up to 200 cycles and give me about a plus three uh, at uh, at 200 cycles. I'm trying to give you some bottom end. You're, you're kind of mid-rangey. You've got a nice top end coming, uh, but we need a little more bottom end. Roger. And Roger. Roger, there is something about uh, 2K. Uh, if you have any EQ in the 2K range, uh, I would pull that back a, uh, a couple of dB or three. Roger, Roger. Well, I have found a smile uh, is a nice EQ curve. Uh, if you look at your equalizer, uh, mid-range uh, would be 1K. That's the bottom middle of the smile. And uh, then you uh, just uh, ring up uh, the other EQs to form a, uh, a kind of a smile on either end, boosting towards the top and boosting uh, towards the bottom and uh, leaving your 1K uh, uh, bottom of the smile flat. Roger. Pretty much what it looks like now. Um, pretty good. Pretty good. Got a smile with uh, 10 feet there over. Roger that, yeah. I wish I had a better signal on you. Uh, I could tell more precisely what it is, but uh, I think we're uh, closer than where we were, and uh, if uh, you run that way for a while and uh, see if anybody salutes and what they say, and then uh, if you manage uh, to get back uh, and uh, check in next uh, next Friday afternoon between uh, 3.30 and 5 Eastern Daylight Time, we'll, we'll compare notes. Roger. Roger. Yeah, Roger, Roger. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you very much for taking the time with me. Uh, I do have the information about where to look for the recording, and I will, do the, I will take a look for that in a couple of days. So uh, you have a great
great uh, Friday evening and a uh, great weekend. And uh, we'll uh, hopefully talk to you again soon. And uh, I hope everything gets as well with you. Uh, FC Care Casey, 9 BKB, WATE. Roger, Roger. Yeah, just, uh, just note that you are... Um, I would say a little sufficient on the bottom end. Uh, you might need a couple more dB at, uh, say, 200 cycles or somewhere in there. Uh, but uh, you be the judge uh, when you listen back to your uh, your audio. Roger, Roger. Roger. Okay, will do. Will do. Let's just boost it up a little bit more at 200. And uh, check the next band at 150. All right, I appreciate you taking the time with me and uh, giving me these good suggestions, and uh, we'll uh, check it out and get some more reports on it, and uh, see how we do uh, you know, on the, on, uh, in the clinical test. <laughs> uh, have a good one, and uh, again, thank you, Casey and I, BKB from WAT. Roger, Roger. What was the name again, please? Again, please. Yeah, name is Arnie Alpha Radio November India Echo Arnie. Uh, Roger, Arnie. Yes, sir. Well, good, good going there, and uh, you have a, a good weekend, 73s, and uh, hopefully we can uh, catch you next uh, Friday. Uh, so we'll say threes for now, and uh, gosh, uh, I have been a pumpkin for 10 minutes and <laughs> didn't even know it. So uh, this is uh, Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor, and the Friday afternoon QSO Vlog program where we record from 3.30 till 5 live and then post it up on YouTube within the, the next couple of days so folks can hear their audio. So if you go to YouTube and do a call letter search for Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor, that will take you to our QSO Vlog page, and on that page... Uh, uh, you'll be looking for a QSO entitled My Group Air Check 51019. My Group Air Check 51019. So I want to thank everybody for participating with our QSO V Log Network, and we'll see you next Friday. Until then, threes, and this is KC9 VKV Clear.